Want to see something cool? I'm foaming like a rabid dog out here on your behalf today because in our area of a million and a half people, maybe a hundred actually noticed this. A silent giant slipped through West Michigan twice over the weekend, and thanks to the help of some incredible people that can teach me lessons in practical nerdery and applied autism, I get to share it with you. Das ist ein Schnabelwagen, and only 86 of these big bitches have ever been made. Usually, big things get moved around on flat cars or low boys, which is just a flatbed with congenital depression, and the load sits on the car's deck. They load M1 Abrams two at a time on just a flat car and zip a mile of them across the country no problem. Those things are dainty. But when you really most sincerely need to haul something packed with gravity, something that makes your adiposially vexed ex look anorexic, I'm talking epically heavy. Somewhere between Chuck Norris's dextral testicle and my crippling self-doubt, something as attracted to the earth as I am to your mom. You need a schnabel car. There's two cool things that make this Thundercock rolling stock so interesting, so now it's time for a breakdown. First thing is that the load doesn't sit on the car, it is the car. The entire load is actually hanging in space, bolted in place, and becomes a structural member suspended and centered between the two ends with their icosapodial wheel sets. The load has to be designed like this from the start. The second thing is the wheels. There's 40 on this car. The trade-off to using wheels to move things around is the contact patch. That's the part that actually touches the ground, is as tiny as my regret. The contact patch for each tire on your car is only about as big as your footprint. It's way smaller with the steel wheels of a train because they don't experience nearly as much elastic deformation, and this leads to limitations in both friction and support. The maximum per axle load for a train in the U.S. varies depending on where you are, but about 35 tons is typical. So just like with semis that carry rocks or asphalt, the solution is adding more axles. Maybe this will put things in perspective for you. The Schnabel car you see here has 20 axles. The SD70 AC locomotive up front rolls on 6. That EMD only weighs 415,000 pounds, and it's dwarfed by the Schnabel. Anytime you see something that's dwarfed by the fuck you physics of a diesel locomotive, well, that's pretty cool. 